Hello, everyone. Welcome to The First Pencil with Kathy and Mike. My name is Mike Bacargai, and with me today, as always, the wicked, cool, always awesome, friend to horses everywhere, and super cool social media. I hate the word guru, so I'm not going to say guru, but I will say pro, social media pro, <laughs> Kathy Cruz. <laughs> Kathy, hello. I think you're a pro, probably more than me. Mm, I'm a consumer of social, that's for sure. I, I consume a lot of content. Yes. In fact, uh, my son and I were joking the other day about, we got on a topic about um, superheroes, you know, the, the Marvel universe, and and then there's the, the variants like The Boys, you know, which is like the anti-superhero. Um, I think it's a Netflix series that was pretty interesting. Um, but if I was a superhero, I would be the consumer because I consume so much content, social media, digital content. I'm just always consuming. So that would be my superpower is I can intake tons of content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am a consumer as well, but I think you're more, more, yeah. Well, and all, you're always out there uh, like, I don't know, saying cool, nice things to people. And, you know, I'm not much that way. I think it, but I don't type it. <laughs> I do like to, to share some positive, you know, that's, that, that's what I feel is kind of, I won't say an obligation, but I feel like it, it's important for me to provide some type of balance, even if it's only internally, you know, there's so much negative in the world. Yeah. I feel like if I'm saying something positive, it keeps me in a better balance yeah you know with with everything going on in the world i try to make sure that when i go online and if i do say something it's 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 not like the rest of the noise you know yes we know there are hundreds of individual things going on that are all negative i could say negative things about a hundred different topics but what would that accomplish yeah. it doesn't accomplish anything so i just want to say something positive yesterday was uh, you know, I, I because I'm on social, we track all these, you know, potential hashtags and, and trends, right? Yesterday was National Selfie Day. Well, mm -hmm. for some reason, I when I read it, initially, uh, I saw somebody make a reference to it. I thought it was National Selfie in a Bronco Day. So <laughs> I took a picture in my Bronco. And then I realized, oh, it's just National Selfie Day. But <laughs> mm -hmm. well, so still, on brand. Brand. still on brand. Still on brand, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, coincidentally, I, uh, I wrote a post this week about uh, social media and is it still worth it? And um, the short answer is yes, but it has to be, you have to be more deliberate and, um, and kind, and there's enough negativity out there. And if you, when you're more deliberate, you meaning a person that's either, you know, someone that, like the reason I uh, am on social, I mean, there's not a bunch, there's a few reasons, but one is that because I have a business and I have to sell my services and connect and, and all of that. So, um, and it's a networking situation, right? That's the way I kind of came to it. And so if you're on social for that reason, so if like you're another small business owner, if you're a salesperson, real estate agent, one of that that in that type of world where you have to present yourself online um or it's good to um you know being argumentative and you know crazy about things is your choice and that's fine except it just looks a certain way and i just feel like there's enough of that and while i will talk about the things that are very very important to me like like equine welfare and what the Bureau of Land Management is doing and stuff like that. And because we are connected to all of that um, world with, uh, with regard to legislation and stuff, that's, that to me isn't negative. It's more like getting the word out and also just, just helping people come on board with, with what's going on. So, but. Raising awareness. Yeah. The kind of content, you know, you know, the kind of content I'm talking about the where people. Yes, I do. Arguing. I've learned all of that I know about horse welfare right. through following you and, and becoming friends with you. I, I you know, I, I know what horses are, but I had no idea the things that are going on in the world right. of horses 
and so we became friends and I started following your posts and following Hana Lee and it's been engaging and, and insightful for me. Yeah. And that's why every time, you know, you come up with a, a horse that you guys have rescued, I'm like, score, victory, because yeah. I know how many, you know, other other ways it can go. Yeah. And, you know, the what's happened to our public lands, uh, they're getting raped and pillaged by by extracting industries, the cattle ranchers and the miners and trackers and and horses are in the way and they get rounded up by a helicopter and people don't know it. It goes on. They are very quiet about it. They don't, they make sure that they are following around in the shadows. They are just not, you know, so I feel like I need to get that word out so people will know, you know, but, but anyway, so that, but that the content, like just, just come at it, like being kind and you're representing yourself. And um, you shared with me a post yesterday from someone who has not, figured that part out uh uh and and it comes off very crazy very conspiracy conspiracy theory ish and um kind of mental and that regardless of whether you believe it you know I, i'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm not judging you to do. I'm just saying, if you want to, <laughs> if if you want people to connect with you and 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 refer you and think of you when there's they need something or someone they know needs something you sell, you know they're probably not gonna. They're just gonna remember that crazy and then think about somebody else and consider consequences. And yes. and the thing I back up because you know you and I um, have a shared friend that that taught me a lot a long time ago about being authentic, yeah. And I've always remembered that 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 regardless of everything else that that came out of that experience, I've always thought you know I need to be authentic. I need to be me. I can't be anybody else. Yeah, I could be, but I won't be anybody else very well. So I'm authentic, but I'm still kind of guarded because you know I understand that whatever whatever stand you make you're gonna piss off 50 percent of the world anyways i'm not afraid of pissing off people but i don't want to become that stand either right. Right. i mean people that know me and follow me know my leanings they know kind of know where i'm at so i don't need to beat them in the face with it mm -hmm. i don't use social media as a diary if i needed a diary i'd have a diary nobody mm -hmm. would see it mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah, <laughs> yeah. there are things that i support but that doesn't mean that I, I need to bang anybody over the head with it. And then when, if I did, I wouldn't be upset when people said, hey, you know, based on what I saw online, I, I don't think this would be a good business adventure for us to do business together because I don't think our values and our alignment. So I wouldn't blame them. Right. You know, you can't have it both ways. You can't go out there and say, I'm all about this. And then when someone says, okay, well, based on that, I think we should make a different, you know, oh, you're, you're a son of a bitch because you don't want to do business with me because of that. No, you can't have it both ways. You know, you have to understand the consequences. People are going, and it's not canceling. It's just a choice. <laughs> That's the way free market works. If I don't agree with what you're saying, I'm going to go do business over here. And that is because that's a natural occurrence in human interactions. I, and what, what I wrote about, I didn't write everything I wanted to. Um, I will. I have a lot of thoughts about it, a lot of things to say, but I just thought I would just share one component, but one What's changed is that in the beginning, you know, we 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 were shouting from the rooftops about being quote unquote transparent. But when you're transparent now, it's um it's sometimes dangerous, uh, especially if you're female. Um, because if you if you say something that's controversial, even if it's not controversial, even if you I mean it can be something just that doesn't seem controversial and then he, the attack starts and um so so what so like i say what's changed is the transparency it, it's you can't be yourself really too much you you can but you can't like there's because everything you say and do will be taken you know maybe the wrong way or whatever the case so so like a you great say, case you know, example for that too i was considering uh you know i, I managed a lot of the the stuff where all the stuff from my car show right uh -huh. today is is world beetle day 
right, uh, for the Volkswagen Beetle, because on this date, the, the Volkswagen Beetle, the initial paper's oh. car was commissioned. So I thought that would be a great post for a car show. But if I was a business and I was looking at a way to use that as maybe a theme, I would be hesitant because of that, that connection. You know, 1936, the person that commissioned the first Volkswagen isn't someone as a business I would necessarily want to have a connection to because that could be turned a thousand different ways wrong. Whether it's legitimate or not, it, that doesn't matter. So I would shy away from World Beetle Day as a theme for a post for a business, but for, you know, a car show where there's a lot of Volkswagens there anyways. Right. So, you know, th that's the thing in the world we live in now is is in that authentic and wanting to promote who you are and, and what you stand for. It sucks that you have to look at things 20 different ways from all the different angles, but you do have to if you're going to be thorough about it. And what, so I had a conversation this morning on LinkedIn with uh, Anyoka, who was our guest a few months ago, um, about this very subject because um, she she mentioned like, are we actually, because this social media, like let's just say Facebook for for this conversation, you, we are not meant as humans to be all things to all people. And when it's a huge, massive social, quote unquote, social network that everyone's trying to connect, we're not meant to. We're meant to be in tribes. We're meant to have uh, closer, closer relationships. And so, what that's now morphing into is these, she called it silos, which could, you know, I mean, that's, that's a good term. Um, it's probably a little strong, but nonetheless, it's groups of people that have shared common interests. And in the, and to me, I'm seeing with the, what's happened with Twitter, for instance, and, and of course, Facebook and Instagram with the, uh, disinformation has ra as rampant. And so people are coming away from those platforms and going, okay, where can I go? And so then I think there's going to be, and I think there is now smaller social networks that attract certain people, certain, you know, just a tribe of some sort. And I also think that's how Substack has gotten bigger than it has. They've done a lot of improvements to it too, but, you know, if Substack is a for people, uh, for the listener, the um, Substack is a, uh, I guess it would be a newsletter platform, but it's, it, you can, it's an email platform and together, and you can, if you want to write a newsletter and you need, you can get subscribers and you can charge or not. And a lot of the well-known uh, journalists have started using it to get off of Twitter. They know Twitter is not long for this world. And so that's Casey Newton, as you know, the, he does platformer, that's his, he's on Substack. Um, that's, uh, he's a tech reporter that I often, uh, forward to Mike, uh, you got to read Casey, <laughs> uh, and he has with Kevin Rissi has a great podcast called hard for it. And it's always good stuff. Always good. And Casey's very funny. He's just naturally funny too. So he's, yeah. But, um, so I see these smaller, you know, groups, it's where we're coming back to where we feel more comfortable. I mean, I just feel more comfortable in a smaller group of people who we have shared interests. It, we don't have to all agree. We just shared interest. I don't want to be out in the world with this, you know, with millions of people able to attack me. So, uh, and that's kind of what it's come to, right? So while we're in this transition, uh, my, my point was just, you know, be as kind as you can. And we can still disagree, but that doesn't mean we can't be kind. Um, you know, so, and it was, it's just a reminder for me too, because <laughs> I can get pretty snarky. <laughs> I think we all can. And uh, I posted a couple of weeks ago, you know, it, it, when you're, when you're speaking in the voice of a business that you represent, whether you're a, a, an employee of the business or a paid person on the outside as a vendor, when you're speaking in that voice, it's easy to forget, you know, and, and, and get into that defense mode. Uh, yeah, in it is. The case in point I was talking about is, uh, when you're answering like a negative review, yeah. especially if you're, it, it, let's say you're at the business, you work at the business, you know, your business's side of the, the situation that the customer saying, and you know that they're embellishing or even just lying. Yeah. It's easy to, to want to refute that. And I said, you know, the best way to answer a negative review is type out what you want to say. Mm -hmm. Just get it all out. Yeah. Take a breath, delete it. 
and then write what you should say because yeah. you're not writing for that person or that experience. You're writing for potential customers that are going to be looking through your reviews. We know that they are. The data shows it. And they're going to specifically be looking at the negative ones because everyone has positive ones. And that's, you know, a lot of the positive ones they, they are saying now that consumers dismiss because they assume they're fake or they're paid for or they're bought or whatever. So they're going to look at the negative ones. And if you answer realistically and say, hey, you know, whatever, we're trying to get, you know, we, we, we admit we're not always perfect, but we can only fix what we know about. You know, this situation was unfortunate. Whatever it is, however you word it, rather than going out, that's not what happened. You're a liar. You're a scum. You know, <laughs> I, I shared with you a long time ago. I, I remember a Ford dealer that the GM, when he saw a negative review, went in and said, well, you know, maybe if you paid your bills on time, you wouldn't have negative credit and we wouldn't have had to try so hard to get you the deal. And if you wouldn't have bounced your down payment check, we wouldn't have had to take the car away from you, which is all true. But that's <laughs> all it does is make the car dealership look like what everybody assumes a car dealership is anyways. So I was like, dude, you can't, you can't do that. He's like, oh, tell me something in there that isn't true. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it does, you know, the guy's a, a, a loser, but you can't yeah. call him out like that, dude. It's not okay. No, not good. Not good. Yeah. Post for, for the people, not, you know, an algorithm or a, a search yeah. software. You got to post for real people, you know, people yeah. are going to be looking at this. They want to know who you are. They want to know how you react. They want to know if they should do business with you. Can they trust you? I did a, a, a national uh, training program for a manufacturer uh, a few years ago, and it was called Reputation Matters. And uh, it, there was regional group, regional uh, get-togethers, basically like workshops, and dealers and all of their management came. And uh, that was one of the biggest standouts to me is they would argue about the re reply to a bad review. And it was, I know they're calling your baby ugly. I get it. Okay. But, you know, if you like the, exactly what I told them, what you just said, write it out, whatever you got to do, and then, and then give it to someone who's objective or at least removed from the situation and have them edit it and then and then go back but yeah you can't it isn't that's not what transparency means that's not <laughs> no 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 and the toughest one sometimes I'll, I'll i'll be the first one to to say i've been at companies and seen a review and known yeah that was a, a bad situation we screwed that up yep you know that's the toughest one because yeah. you do want to defend yourself you want to say well this is why this happened you can't, you got to set all that, take the emotion out yeah, and, and speak to the person that's going to read it next week or next month. They're not going to know the real story. They're not going to know all the, the different things that can happen. Yeah. Things can go wrong in any business, in any situation. If it's going to go wrong, it can, right? You know, yeah. Murphy's going to sneak in there somewhere. Should happen sometimes, but the people that read it three months from now, aren't going to know all that. They're not going to care. Mm -mm. They're just going to know this guy said something bad. The dealership said that's not what happened. And now there's a he says, she says, it's an argument that that doesn't tell me I should do business with you. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, we were going to uh, each of us talk a little bit about, um, I think I would call it content strategy, a little, a, a, a little input from you and an input from me. Yes, ma'am. Um, you want to go first? I would love to. Uh, I started to share with you before we hit record, and and we're getting better at that. Actually, we you are. Know, we thought yeah. for like two hours, and then we'd hit record and have to regurgitate all the stuff, but it didn't have the same passion, right? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're trying to just keep it a mystery, and then hit record and just go with it, whatever happens, and we're getting better at it. Yeah. But one thing that's kind of um, amusing, I think, is. I was able to shift your perception and I know moving forward as we talk in the next few weeks you're going to come back and say you were totally right because <laughs> now I see it all the time yeah. uh, as, as most people know um, whether you're in automotive or whatever you're doing this idea of artificial intelligence uh, specifically a site called chat GPT has uh, it was open to the public and people are using it um, people are using it in a just a thousand different ways. Everyone's got their own way to use it. But in marketing and advertising specifically, it is a 
pretty cool tool. It, it can save some time. It can be used as a thought starter. It can expand on things and, and help you in your writing. Um, mm -hmm. If you're doing uh, any type of content creation, any type of marketing where you're trying to put together, craft some posts for like social media, it can be used in a lot of different ways, a very powerful tool. But in that it is artificial intelligence. You know, it's not real intelligence, it's, it's limited. And I think <laughs> the people that, that created it, that, that built these program, the algorithm behind it, I wonder where they kind of got their motivation from were they trying to replicate teenagers uh, <laughs> um, speaking to each other in text? And then they thought that that was going to be a great way to, to expand on things. In other words, uh, specifically, I've noticed since it, it came about a lot more um, vendors, especially that are doing advertisement with social media marketing companies, some individuals that, that we both know are using or putting up posts with emoticons or emojis, these little icons strewn throughout the entire post. They start with the paragraph, they end the paragraph in the middle, they use them to enhance um, sentences or, you know, bring attention to things. I don't know what they're trying to do, but it's gotten out of hand. I'm seeing it a lot. And I think because I started to notice it, because when I type something into chat GPT, I see it when it, the, it spits it out. Okay, this is what we came up with. I, I take all those out of there and I'll copy it to a Word doc and I'll re put my, my spin on it. You know, put it, try to put it more in my tone because chat GPT doesn't know who I am, doesn't know how I talk, but it can give me some bullet points, some highlights that I can take and, and, expand on with my personality, my tone, the way I like to write. And I see that a lot of people aren't necessarily doing that. They're just copying it right out of chat with all these emoticons. So now for good or bad, now every time I'm scrolling through LinkedIn or even uh, Facebook or Twitter, you can see it. Anytime I see one of these emoticons, my first, first assumption is, oh, chat GPT wrote that. Yeah, just uh, for the listener, basically what it looks like is uh, you're just looking at copy, like write text, but like every third word, there's an emoji or something. And that it it's it's very disconcerting to try to read. Um, and I had never seen it because uh, the when ChatGPT when you're using it, um, uh, you the prompts are what matter. Like you need to give it the right prompt to get what you need out of it. And and honestly, I think that's an art. That I'm, I haven't mastered. You know, it's new, but um, but I use it, but I don't ask it to to give me a social media post, which is what you've been doing. You've been saying write a social media post for blah blah blah, right? Um, and so I had never seen it. I only just ha you know, write a headline for first pencil podcast or write you know that has something to do with it or whatever. I'll do that. Or uh, I was think I was updating my website and I needed some, just an inspiration for it. So I'm not getting any of those. So I had never seen it. And of course I look on LinkedIn and I'm not seeing it either. So you pointed it out and it's, it's not good. And it's, it's, it's a tell, it's a tell that you copied and, and pasted from chat GBT, which is supposed to just like help you, right? You're just and worse. If it's not, let's say, this person wrote all that himself. Why are you using all these? There's in one 11 emoticons in three paragraphs, 11 of them. So what, what, what changed in the last three months that you, right. let's say, well, I didn't use chat GPT. Oh, that's my content that I wrote. Okay. I believe you, you know, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Why are you being influenced by these emoticons that you're seeing every place and thinking that that's the way to communicate? Who put the word out there that adults not texting each other uh -huh. like emoticons in a right. professional business type right. information content post? Yeah. Yes, I, you're right. I did, you know, a lot of times I'll say, hey, can you, um, can you take these bullet points and put them into a paragraph for LinkedIn? Because that kind of helps uh -huh. me get it, 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 first of all, it helps me get the brevity I need because I don't need, you know, a, a nine paragraph novel for LinkedIn. It'll help me get what I mean. And then, like I said, I, I post everything to Word. Mm -hmm. 
clear the formatting and it takes all those modicons out but then mm -hmm. i can i can expand i can you know compress i can put my tone in it it uses a lot of um uh, i would say like classical english you know some of the yes. grammar and phrasing yeah. isn't mm -hmm. quite conversational mm -hmm. and of anything i've always been accused of writing too conversationally that's one of the reasons i gave up on a blog a long time ago because it just People were like reading it and saying, well, if you want my feedback, my constructive criticism, you write too conversationally. It's not really, you know, professional sounding. It's 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 conversational. OK, that's I, I didn't go to school for journalism, man. I fucking talk like I talk and that's how I write. So it is what it is. But I take the chat stuff as a thought starter. And that's really what how I use it. That's what it should be used for, especially when you're talking about social media, because it's supposed to be you or the brand or yeah especially if you're a person and you don't talk like that and especially if like all of a sudden that your post looked like that where a few months ago it didn't it's uh not good not a good thing just you know and I know it's harder to come up with stuff that is in your voice it is harder work but the harder work pays off because it comes across like you and that's what people want to see or hear and that's why they're connected to you so and we circle back to authentic right so if yeah. i'm in sales of any kind and i'm trying to expand and grow a community and i'm using this artificial content first of all i'm not going to connect with a lot of people on a real level which is what using social selling is all about you want to connect with people based on interests common you know likes and 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 really on a real level so i'm going to miss a lot of opportunities to connect with people right and the the worst thing that can happen is when someone comes to a dealership they meet you based on the you know connection that you had online they find out that you don't talk like that you're not like that you know right you know the person i thought i was coming to do business with isn't the person i'm talking with right now there's a disconnect now so now you've made it harder for yourself you put up yeah. obstacles that didn't need to be there yeah. Whether you're a company or an individual, however, you know, you're using it, just be careful. Yeah. Okay, so I'll share my quick thing in uh, just getting down into the weeds with Facebook. Uh, like I say, I'm never going to call it meta. I'm not. <laughs> I'm with you. Uh, Facebook content. All right. So as you know, I run the Honolulu page and uh, I can always tell when things are changing and uh, they're changing all the time, but when they change dra drastically, maybe it's a strong word, but but notably, right? So uh, I have been for a long, long time posting, uh, I get a picture of one of our horses and then I'll put like a cool quote on it and make a meme out of it. And, but it's an image, right? It's an image, Facebook sees it as an image. So I've been doing that for a very long time. I set it up in a uh, app called Post Planner, which I can recommend to everyone. Uh, it uh, allows you to post to Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, I believe Instagram, even though I don't use it for Instagram, and then something, I think even Pinterest, but it's awesome. Uh, yeah, I just have to plug them because they're it's great. It, it, what's great about it, I think that makes it the most... Um, useful for me is that it allows me to repeat posts so you can just set it to repeat and then say for how long you want like do you want it to repeat oh, nice. 12 weeks or even once a year or whatever it just makes it takes all that that like a lot of that stuff that's on your shoulders off and it it just especially for somebody that's um already got a lot of work to do uh and does Honolulu at 10 o'clock on her couch at night so um <laughs> But anyway, so I set them up and then that way they're posting and then I can do stuff in real time. So so what I've noticed, though, is that the engagement on images has been taken to like almost nothing. And and comparatively speaking, we have like 82,000 people that like the page or follow the page. And I'm that's a substantial page, you know, yes, so that's anyone why... that's listening needs to hear that because it's not yeah. like. You run a page that's got 300 people and you don't know no. you know that's not a really good sample audience most dealerships are going to have between 2500 and 7000 a few of the dealerships that are really really rocking may have 10,000 followers i i 
it's rare that I see a car dealership out there with more than 10,000 followers. So 82,000 is a, is a pretty, pretty uh, substantial page. So yes. it's, if, if, if it was some um, other page, it would just be anecdotal. And I, it, I don't think it's worth mentioning, but with a page as large as ours and as, as old as ours, it's been around for, Oh, I think 2011. Uh, so it's been, it's, so I can look at and see just by managing it, I can see what's going on. I can see how things have changed. Like, cause I haven't changed anything. So there's that says that, you know, fa so Facebook, what I, what I'm learning and I've learned is that short video about a minute. I've said this before, but it's, it's even more, I think it's, it's kind of settled down a little bit. It was pretty hyped there for a while. Remember the posts yeah. when that were like three or four or 5 million views. Um, I learned a lot by doing that. Uh, I learned that um, on Instagram, especially, but I believe on Facebook too, uh, when you do a reel, it becomes um, uh, not private. So uh, anyone can use it and, and do anything they want with it, which is, that could be an issue depending on, you know, what your video is, could be even copyright issue. So I don't typically do reels uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, they give you the option to not allow that. Um, so anyway, the point I'm telling you this is because the images have not been getting the engagement. They were um, even less than they were. And like I say, 82,000 followers, fans, whatever, um, I'm getting like maybe 30 to 40, sometimes a hundred likes on an image wow. um, years before it was three or 400 organically. All of this is organic. Uh, uh, but when I do a video, like a minute video, minute to two minute video, uh, that gets over a hundred, sometimes uh, a thousand. So as you're, thinking about your content for Facebook and Instagram, um, think about ways. So what I did is this weekend, last weekend, uh, Jocelyn, uh, who's also on the board with me, she's the VP, she, we do videos together. I film and she talks. And uh, two of our things that we want on the page is people to sponsor a horse for $10 or more per month. And then the second is to get them off Facebook and onto our email list. <laughs> Those are my two main goals. And because I'm not getting the engagement uh, with like, let's say a, uh, I, have an Im I have an image every Tuesday I post, an, it's an image, but it's a, a picture of one of our horses and talks about uh, sponsoring the horse. That gets maybe seven likes and like one share. So I'm like, no one's seeing this. So I said, Jocelyn, let's make some videos about sponsoring a horse and, and then also joining the uh, email list. So uh, I'm going to test those now this week. I have them um, writing copy for it and um, I'm going to test those. And I have a feeling they're going to do a whole lot better. Much better. Yeah. And they're, they're about a minute long, each of them. So my, my thing is my, I guess my suggestion is that if you're not getting any very much engagement with images and things. Um, it isn't your fault. It's it's because Facebook has has throttled it and made it so that your 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 if you have video, it's going to get more. It's going to get shown to more people. So organically. So if you're not so to expand on the idea that video is king, right? That's a, that's a buzz that's been around there forever. Video is king because it's being forced on us. Exactly. It's being forced on you to create. Uh, and, um, and that could be in response to Facebook <laughs> seeing like short form video on platforms like TikTok and others as a threat. Oh, yeah. So it's now very they're much trying that. to force creators on Facebook to yeah. jump in and, and do more video. It's 100% that. 100% they want to get people off of TikTok and come back to Facebook. They look at the numbers, they know the data, they know their users and the demographics and Facebook user demographics are older, TikTok younger, they want them back. And so that's why they're doing it. And I get it, but uh, like- I Maybe think they should use emoticons. <laughs> maybe, maybe they should put those, like everyone use emojis in your in your text on Facebook and we'll give you more, we'll put your, your content in the newsfeed more. We'll promote those. <laughs> yeah. But I think I test you after we were talking about this earlier in the week. And it's that usually when two big companies are 
competing for customers, the customer wins usually, right? Usually because you get lower prices or you get better service or whatever it is, right? Uh, but not in this case. In this case, you get you get the opposite because uh, it just is making everybody forcing them to to do things they don't wouldn't necessarily want to do. It's harder to do video for most people. Um, uh, some people feel at home with it, but with it, but a lot of people don't. And it takes, uh, if you're a brand, it takes effort. It takes a lot more effort than just an image. So, um, you know. And then you got to look at the end goal. We've right. talked for for a year now, probably almost two years. We're coming up on doing this podcast. We've talked about the difference between being a celebrity online and and building a brand and creating a community. Right. I've seen, gosh, in the last three months. I'm not going to lie. I I am on TikTok. I've told you before, I have, I'm not the TikTok person. My, my OCD or ADHD, whatever it is, kicks in about three minutes into TikTok. I, I watch a couple and I'm out. I, I, I honestly don't feel compelled to look at multiple TikToks, but I have seen a couple of dealerships that are, are I mean, they're, they're in the terms of TikTok, they're crushing it. They have a big following, lots of views, lots of comments. But I still wonder, is that translating into car deals? Because a car dealership, and that's my world, right? I've lived in car dealerships for almost 40 years now. So everything I, I live and breathe relates to or is involved with car dealerships. How is that affecting their sales? Right. Are the people that are liking their videos going to this Toyota store and buying a Toyota? Because they're investing time, effort. They, have a, they must have a huge budget. They're working with, you know, the local cable provider, you know, there, there's just a lot of things going into the quality. These aren't just, you know, guys out on the lot dinking around with TikTok. They're, these are professionally produced short form videos and it's great. I mean, they're funny. Sure. But what's the end goal to me? What's the end goal? The end goal is to build your brand and make it so that you will sell more. <laughs> Right. I mean, it, winning on TikTok isn't necessarily winning in your showroom. No. And I'm not, I, it sounds like I'm opposed to TikTok. I'm not. I just need to understand myself how the two can correlate together. I, I would ask the question and want an answer. What, what, what is it that you're going for? What is your goal? Um, because not, a lot of times it's being on camera, people, just we get different on camera and there's a, a a narcissistic sort of payback there if you're a narcissist <laughs> i mean uh and and there's um there there's just this ego thing that happens it's natural to happen right and so vanity right yeah uh, vanity yeah yeah and so are you are you a victim of that cuz sometimes you don't even realize it we know some car bros that don't really notice that much about that and they continue to just do things like that that just doesn't get them a whole lot of revenue, but it maybe gives them something that like they get noticed and they're a celebrity. Okay. So I guess that's the point is like, are you doing and if you're if you're doing or... if you're trying to grow your celebrity so that you can increase attendance at a conference because that's what you're right. trying to do. Sure. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. But again, yeah. from a dealership standpoint, if you're out there promoting, hey, dealers, you need to be jumping into video, jump into TikTok, that may help you grow your audience of dealers as customers that want to pay you to help them grow. But how how is it going to help a dealer to invest in that platform, you know? Yeah, because I can tell you, you, when you're selling things, whatever it is, you want to market to the places it be on the places where your customer is, where the buyer is, the decision maker is, and there's a really good chance that there are zero dealers on TikTok. <laughs> They're barely on Facebook, <laughs> and only that for probably to look at their like, I don't know, their friends from high school or their golf buddies or maybe their grandkids or whatever. But uh, yeah, that's the whole thing of marketing is where your customer is and. And yeah, TikTok is not going to, that's not, no, no. So, however, uh, you could take those TikTok videos and put them on Facebook and see what they would do. Cause I would, and Instagram for that matter. Um, so I, I'll, was I'll, I'll keep you posted on how this goes. I yes, hope I want to, I want to hear how it goes.
Yeah. Because that'll be helpful to to anyone that's maybe listening in that, that is at a dealership too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I said a long time ago, in fact, I was writing um, at Digital Dealer year before last. I got to to meet um, one of the guys that hosts the podcast uh, and, and, you know, we drove around in a car through Vegas and he was asking, you know, just the generic interview questions. And he I said, you know, if you were to that. get back into <laughs> to car sales right now, what would you you know, what would you do? I said, I would, I would focus on Instagram, me personally. Mm -hmm. Now that may not be the answer for everyone, but me personally, I like the platform. I've been using that platform forever. So I'm familiar with it. And I would grow my audience with that because I could take it a number of different ways. And, and he was like, that's, that's kind of not the normal answer. You know, and I said, okay, you asked me what I would do. Me, mm -hmm. my career, my the car guy, that's how I would approach it. And I guarantee Right now, if I was to stop doing all the things I'm doing and I had nothing else, if I went and got my sales license renewed, I would go to a dealership and not apply as a GSM, not apply as a finance manager, not apply as a, I would just go sell cars. That's it. That's, first of all, that's what I have the patience for right now. Yes. <laughs> at, at 50 some years old, my patience is, is very limited, but I would just have fun because I would grow a, a, a community really quickly. You know, I it wouldn't take me three years like it did when I first got on the line to build that repeat and referral business where I wasn't taking ups anymore. I wouldn't be taking ups from day one. Right. I would be building my, my, my brand, mm -hmm. letting people know what I'm doing, showing them what's, what's available. You know, I would be highlighting the store, highlighting the, the cars. I would be doing walk arounds. I'd be having fun with it. And I would grow my business pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. It would be awesome. Yeah, it would be any, and at five, like if my shift was over, see ya. <laughs> yeah. No more, don't have to manage, don't have to make reports. Those keys, when they put those keys in your hand, that's oh, the yeah. biggest thing oh, I've yeah. ever felt in my life. <laughs> those keys weigh 2,000 pounds. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> yeah. All right, right let's switch gears. Let's switch gears and talk about some fun stuff. Uh, I will start off, not to cut you off. But no, I have I, to share. I'm not. I'm not. You know, I, I'm very happy to to share with you once again that I've I've kind of become an Elvis Costello fan. Mm, very good. Last night, I just for whatever reason, I I unplugged my laptop and I went downstairs. I still had some work to finish up, but I was tired of sit you know looking at the corner in my home office here, and I set it on the the dining room table and I kicked on the TV and it was on Access TV. And I caught the very beginning of Elvis Costello live from the artist's den. And it was a phenomenal show, even from not the, the most hardcore fan standpoint. It was just a great show. It, I ended up not doing any work. I closed the laptop and I just enjoyed a nice hour of Elvis Costello with his band. Wow. It was really, really, I will recommend that if, if anybody is even remotely a fan of Elvis Costello, it's fairly recent, um, but it it's just a really great way to to spend an hour. So that wow. is my music recommendation. That is uh, astounding. I'm I don't even know what to say. I figured you'd be blown away with that. Wow, that's uh, I'm honestly I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. Uh, I'm just so glad. I mean, you know, his music is very, um, it's not pop music. It's, it's, the lyrics are very, you know, he's a wordsmith, so. Indeed, and, and there's something, whether, to me, live is live, you know, that may, yeah. you know, not be the right thing, but yes, I was watching it on TV, but I was still watching a live performance. There's a difference to me. Yeah. Uh, last weekend, I took my, my my sons to see a band that they like a lot that I was kind of into um, here in Riverside. And I tell you, again, live is live. When you see it in concert, you get immersed in it. You know, I spent the whole week after that show just going through their catalog and becoming a bigger fan of that band because they just blew me away. So mm -hmm. seeing seeing him perform live, yeah, I'd seen clips here and there and stuff. But just sitting and actually paying attention, intently watching 
the show changed everything. It was a great show. Wow. There is a thing to say about live. I can share if I, on YouTube, there used to be a show uh, uh, on regular TV here in, I don't know if it was a national show. It was definitely here in Southern California. Uh, uh, it was called, um, uh, shoot, what was it called? Um, I completely just forgot what it is. It's, but anyway, I was looking at it on YouTube and uh, oh, it's called the Midnight Special. That's it. Do you remember the, a show called the Midnight Special? Yes. It was on like at midnight, and was I it, uh, Channel Eleven. Yeah, it was on Channel Eleven, and it was. I mean, you know, this gives you insight into um, <laughs> like my uh, upbringing. Uh, I would come home drunk and watch it, <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and they had all the you know famous rock and roll stars on Journey. I mean, it's crazy. And what's amazing about it and what you can tell, I like to watch the videos, but I also like to read the comments because a lot of people will be like, I remember this or I was there or, um, but the one comment I see a lot is that it's just amazing that these people are seeing this live on television. And they're so right. You watch, like these days, there's so much lip, lip syncing and, and maybe... I don't know, just background, not live playing. There's like the people, it looks like they're live, but they're not really. But on Midnight Special, it was always live. And what an amazing like experience. So they have a channel, uh, go check it out. It's it's worth worth for sure. I can- I didn't it. realize they had a channel. Now I'm gonna go have to look it up. Yeah, it is. They've got even the first one, like the pilot. And there's like these like crazy- an hour long with all of these different bands from all like Motown, but then like, a, like a rock and roll. And then they, they had in the early ones, they had like even a comedy troupe um, uh, or, a, or a comedian. Um, it kind of morphed into just being about music, but the pilot and the first couple episodes is like, it's crazy. And it's, I think that's first, awesome. It's like in 19, I want to say, 70 it's early it's early but i can remember it would be on even the reruns they i'm sure they were rerunning it up until a few years ago honestly and so you they're they definitely stand the test of time that's for sure yeah go check out back. Home for journey journey is actually and sometimes they would have the uh artist be the host and so in the one where Journey's on it, uh, they're the host. <laughs> it's pretty, they're like introducing these people. It's pretty wild. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yep. It's very cool. Yeah. And then just to add uh, one last thing about Elvis Costello is I have a friend. Um, he's he's a Twitter friend, but D David Wilde, he's, uh, uh, he used to write for Rolling Stone a long, long time ago. And uh, and now he has a podcast and some other stuff, but he's he's a great follow on Twitter. I don't know if he's any player any place else, but he went to see uh, Elvis was here. Elvis and Nick Lowe opened, and so he went to the uh, he went to the show and he shared a video of like <laughs> we've all experienced this, where you go to a live show and you're just you have awesome seats, and then. You're just sitting there enjoying it. And then one of the popular songs come on and people start dancing and they stand up and all of that. But this one- And that old guy was going to oh town. Oh my God, this was, one was- He became the show. He did. <laughs> so <laughs> it's in a tweet, which I can put in the show notes because it's worth watching it. Um, it's, it's just a hilarious. I mean, Mike and I have been- uh, you know, we went to see The Damned and uh, X uh, at Pacific Amphitheater a couple of years ago, and we were bombarded by... You, you forgot one. You forgot one. Reverend Horton Heat. I know. Yep. But... <laughs> the Rev opened that show. They were awesome. They were awesome. X came yep. out and, and just cranked it. Yep. And then The Damned just crushed it beyond belief. Yep. It was That was truly one of the standout events um yeah. that was just magical there was not a you know, a lot of times we have multiple acts on on a a bill there's going to be one that you kind of sit down and maybe have some conversation through they may have a couple hits oh i like that song 
that night, there was not a single minute no. that it was not freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Which made it, you know, all the more tragic because of the people around us. <laughs> because of the people around us, yeah. Because it's like, if here's my thing. If you, you're paying good money to go see awesome bands, why are you getting drunk and then not watching? Like, right. And, and don't get me wrong. When you're like 20, that makes sense. That makes sense. But these people make sense. above 50. <laughs> it's, it's, it's normal, but it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it, yeah. It, it, yes. Yes. I mean, when you get drunk and you're talking, but dude, you're like, why are you just, you're over 50. Shouldn't you just kind of maybe just listen to the music a little bit? I don't know. Yeah, so yeah. But I was happy. It's not happy, but I was glad to see, or just, uh, it made me a little happier that it's happening to other people not just us so <laughs> i've always uh i have a really really good friend one of my best friends in the whole world when i was my mechanic uh he worked at the same dealership that i did and we became the closest of friends we went to i will not exaggerate hundreds of concerts together and it got to a point where we had to go separately for the sake of our friendship because i believe you know, I paid good money for the show, mm -hmm. whether it's a $20 ticket for, you know, just a little club or 200 for a venue. I'm going to get my money's worth. I yeah. like to get there, find my seat with a, while the house lights are on uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. and, and, and be a part of, be ready. You know, yeah. ready. he's my best friend to this day. And he's just one of those people that can't be on time to anything and he can't be rushed. I would get to his house to pick him up and I would be like, dude, we got we'll get there we'll get there dude I, I know but i want to get there now yeah. and you be like dude relax and then we just have a different way of looking at things and i got tired of walking in you know three or four songs in and feeling like i missed something yeah. so i'd say i'll meet you there and that's the only way to this day we can go to a show together because he knows i'll get there <laughs> an hour early but i'm okay with that god damn it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I've been at the Greek for like, you know, an hour listening to the house music play, but just enjoying the, you know, because it's a beautiful venue, just it sitting is. out there. And he has literally missed like the first two bands. And, oh. you know, and he'll come in, dude, was it good? Oh. Shut up. I'm not even talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. We are winding down on our time together. Uh, the best part of my week i don't know about you for sure but it is always the best the highlight of my week to to catch up to talk yeah. shop yeah. share things mm -hmm. that hopefully could help other folks uh, i think this week we shared some some cool stuff if you're out there listening we want to know we want to know if we helped you we want to know if we 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 sparked some conversation if uh we interested you in something, let us know. Um, we may even want to have you on the show to talk about some stuff that's going on out there, especially if you're you're working in dealerships. We want to know right now it's getting to be a weird time in, in dealerships. Inventory yeah. starting to stack up a little. Interest rates are high. Trade values are down. You know, a lot of salesmanship is going to have to shift in order for dealers to, to really stay competitive. So we want to know what's going on out there. Let us let us hear your voice. Yeah, love to hear you. Love to. Yep. Yeah, we've got, uh, uh, and sometimes just to uh, fill you guys in, since if you're still here listening, um, sometimes things don't happen for us to get together during the week. Like last week, we had some, you, you had some things that kind of came up with your job. So my day job. We, your day job that's right so we have to kind of roll with the punches and if we can still get together we will but sometimes we can't so uh, but for the most part we're, we try to be every week um we have a uh guess next week next week's the 29th right yeah yes, super uh, excited about that my friend monica who is a an attorney um and she actually represents people uh who have been run around by particular car dealerships and she has some pretty interesting insights and uh so that's who she who's going to be with us next week so should be good should be fascinating yep so uh i guess that's it right mike we're ready to sign off yes ma'am okay all right well um you guys have a good week and uh, we'll talk to you soon bye for now <laughs>